the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We celebrate the fourth Sunday in ordinary time. My brothers and sisters, God's love is our key to perfection, our true and only hope for heaven. Let us pray that God's grace may now touch and change our hearts. Lord Jesus, you are the true prophet. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the way of, to the Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are God's love given for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, every King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind, and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins, stand up, and tell them all that I command you? Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you says the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put childish things away. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke Jesus began speaking in the synagogue saying today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing and all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth they also asked isn't this the son of Joseph he said to them, surely you will quote me this proverb, physician, cure yourself and say, do here in your native place the things that we had were done in Capernaum. And he said, amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land, it was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zerepta in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them, and went away the gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate the fourth Sunday in ordinary time. The first reading speaks of the call of Jeremiah to become a prophet. It is God who calls and prepares us one to assume the ministry of a prophet 
as the reading states, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicate you a prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Jeremiah didn't elevate himself to the office of a prophet. It is God who chose and ordained him. Jesus comes into the synagogue and reads a passage from Isaiah saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set a liberty those who are oppressed. Having read the passage, he gazes to the audience and tells them, today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus informs the audience that God's own plan is underway as he sends out his own messengers to build up his kingdom. God's messengers have the work of sharing glad tidings to those who live in the margins of the society. God's messengers come to bring liberty to those who are captives in so many ways and forms. It is God who appoints and sends out messengers to fulfill the plan of salvation. Throughout the history of salvation, God has not ceased to send out his messengers to proclaim the good, the good news. Jesus sent out the twelve to proclaim the good news from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. The twelve were confirmed at Pentecost with the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has continued to empower and strengthen God sent messengers to proclaim good news and to release the captives until that day when Jesus returns the second time in glory. You and I are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. By the very virtue of our baptism, God has chosen and sent us out to become his messengers, to proclaim good tidings to the poor and to release the captives. A number of times a devil comes to blacken our minds and pull us away from that what God wants us to be. One may convince oneself that he or she has nothing to offer in building up God's kingdom. One may say, I'm just a good for nothing. I am a chronic sick person. I am old. I am shut in. With all this against me, I have nothing to offer. Limited as we are, God wants us to become messengers of the good tidings. We may do so by caring good attitudes and be grateful for all the blessings God has given to us in our lives. We can join the psalmist as we recited in our responsorial psalm today. I will sing of your salvation. Singing God's salvation is the great and vital ministry which can be fulfilled by our words, thoughts, and actions. We can do it. Yes, we can do it. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is in the world. I believe, I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the only begotten God Son of God, God born of the Father God before God all ages, God, God from God, God light from light, true God, God from true God, begotten God, not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men into for salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to worship of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present our prayers before God the Almighty with faith and trust. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may continue to guide the church with eloquence and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians elected to represent us may be strong in the courage of Christ, who was rejected by his own people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may not rely on earthly things, but place our hope in the God who never fails us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those formed in the womb may be born in security and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick may be touched by the healing presence of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have passed through death to eternal life may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God Almighty, we present all these prayers spoken and those which are in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all. Holy Church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them to pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possesses the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheres to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.